uh, also good friends from college. He will be with us with his worship band from North Carolina. And uh, other guests come out. Hey, Leon. <laughs> hey. Hey. How are you guys? Hi. <laughs> where, where are you coming to us from? California or Las Vegas? Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, I'm uh, in my upstairs studio. Uh, oh, studio nice. slash theater. You can see the uh, projector behind me. This thing I use and I projected. I had a big wall over there. Uh -huh. So sometimes when I'm trying to relax, I'll project some stuff. But I'm setting up because I'm, uh, next week, I this note, Wednesday, we're going uh -huh. to Middleton Freewater to do a concert. And wow. so we're flying in uh, on Thursday. We'll be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday doing you know a couple of seminars and I'll take over Sunday evening, Sunday morning right. service. Wow. Terrific. And, and I want to get into what you're doing now. I don't, I don't know that there are many Christian careers that span the number of decades that you have. <laughs> you are doing amazing. I'm All the time. <laughs> um, I, I remember the first, the first album that I spun as a radio DJ in the uh, West, um, mountains of Western Mass was Star of the Morning. And Star of the Morning, wow. Putting that album out and putting that on the record player and uh, did so many great hits through the years. Leon, uh, yeah. Yeah. We know oh, that thank you started you. With, with Santana. Tell us how yep. you how that happened. And I think actually before that, you, you had a band called Creation. And then yeah. you can walk us through your journey of faith. Well, that first uh, group was really kind of fantastic because that was the first time I did anything professional. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we got the album done and we put it to our local DJ. And he just started playing it on the air. And yeah. I was like, as soon as I gave it to him, I left out and was going back across the bridge because they were kind of like over in the Oakland area. Uh -huh. I was going back to San Francisco across the bridge and he started playing it on the air. And it's the first time I'd ever heard my own music on the radio. So man, yeah. I, my heart was just pumping yeah, like this. And sure. of course, all of San Francisco just got surrounded with that, that music. And it was kind of like a, uh, for an explanation, it's kind of like a Sly Stone kind yeah. of sound because we yeah. and Sly grew up together. So sure. our music is very similar. Okay. And so, but then um, the group, we tried to get it really going in LA and we couldn't kick it off. And at the same time, Carlos Santana was calling and uh -huh. saying, I heard your voice and I like your vocals and how would you like to come and do an album with me? That's cool. So I said, okay, I'll come up to San Francisco, okay. back up to San Francisco and do an album. I did this album and next thing I know, he's saying, I'm right there standing with him. We're doing Oye Como Ba and Gotta Change Your Evil Ways of Black Magic Woman. And he said, you know, yeah. you're going to be the next lead vocalist for Santana. Wow. I said, what? <laughs> we're going to go all over the world and go to Europe and to Japan and all these places he was naming. And San Francisco, now this is just funny, Ralph, but I had only been down to L.A. and up to Tahoe. That's as far as I had been in those days. So yeah. for him to tell me we're going all over the world, I was like, I was so excited. But, you know, in as the Lord would have it, um, I was dating a girl in San Francisco and her brother was a Christian. So every time I come to the house to see her, he would start talking to me about the Lord, you know. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, you know, maybe you should come back when I get a little older because I just joined Santana. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. And he kept telling me, he said, man, those things are going to all pass away. They, you, what you need in your life now is Jesus. So, so after about, I don't know, seven, eight, nine months or something, I finally decided he wore me out, man, wore me down. <laughs> so I finally went to a Bible study. And at this Bible study, uh, they, you know, I could tell that there was a difference in my life and what they were talking about out the Bible. So mm -hmm. we got back to his driveway and he said, how'd you like to meet him? I said, oh, it was fantastic. He said, well, how would you like to get saved? I said, man, I don't know. I don't know if I can be. You, th you think God could save me? He said, yeah. He said, why don't you do why, we'll just pray right here in the car. And this is on 4th of July, 1974. Wow. How old were you then? Yeah. So I let him grab my wrist because I, you know, he was coming at me with the holding my hand thing. And I was like, <laughs> I wasn't having that. So I, you know, it's, I mean, it wasn't no big thing. I just thought, you know, this is San Francisco. So I'm trying to be nice. So I let him grab my wrist. And we began to pray, and it was just wow. like he said, all the stuff, man, it fell off in the back seat. And um, of course, wow. I went right 
back to the Santana group and told them what had happened to me. And I, it was just on from there. I just couldn't keep my mouth shut. So a lot of people got saved in the secular industry. And, wow. and then the Lord released me to just do contemporary Christian. That's all he wanted me to do. So wow. uh, after a few years, that's that's what happened. So and I started doing some of these songs that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And you, you know what? <laughs> I, I want to thank you too, because I don't know that you get the appreciation or credit you you they deserve yeah. for being a pioneer in the CCM industry at the time. Yeah. I know there were others at the time, Barry McGuire, uh, you got second chapter of Bax, a number yeah. of other groups, but you were right there and out of the box in, in a sense, uh, but with the drums and dancing, and yeah. letting us know that we can be free in some churches. And I, I, I think I heard that, that Chuck Smith was a big influence on you and yeah. allowing you to do that, even yes, though he, he didn't was. get into the dancing, God rest his soul. Yeah, he, God he bless was, his soul, man. He's yeah, the he first was, one that saw it. He's the yeah. first one that saw the vision. And wow. they told me to come, you know, sign up with Maranatha Music. And mm. I, I just, I, you know, it was because I came out of that other industry. And yeah. so he said, I really don't have the manpower and the distribution to really put you out there like you're supposed to. Right. So he actually um, kind of hands uh, fed me over to Word Records because Word had this big network. They could right. put yeah. out an album, they could do radio and all that. Right. So that's exactly what happened with wow. uh, uh, Pastor Chuck Smith. He, uh -huh. he passed me off to Stan Moser at Word Records. And uh, uh -huh. so I did my, I did seven albums uh -huh. with them. And according wow. to Stan, you know, they were selling good. And, good. Uh, you know, he, he, he was behind me everywhere I went, uh -huh. you know, promoting me here and there. So yeah, so it, it got out there. I just, I think I've always been a little different than maybe the normal CCM music. And so it kind of maybe didn't get as much airplay. Yeah. But uh, the ones, you know, the guy started morning, got out there, um, yes. Flesh of My Flesh, that was, yes. uh, I was every shocked wedding, that nobody. Every wedding, right? I'm telling you, man, I was shocked nobody had written a song. That's it. The words been in that Bible 2,000 years. <laughs> Nobody ain't wrote a song yet. I said, wow. So I, when I did it, again, it was one of those things. Yeah. Love songs, even in those days, was still a little strange uh, for yeah. a concert. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They could do it at the wedding. That's fine. Yeah. They, had right. a concert. Right. they hadn't quite seeped in yet that that was yeah. okay. But but I did, again, I was just plowing the field. J-E-S-U-S. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, that thing, thing. Again, they wouldn't, for the first year and a half, they wouldn't play it on the radio. Because yeah. they said, we can't be shouting out that name like that. What are you doing? That's disrespectful. Shout, Jay, you can't do that. <laughs> so, that took a year and a half before they played it on the radio. So I was just, uh, I was always a little bit ahead of the curve. But, and, and, but that was a part of, when you pioneer yeah. something, that's kind of yeah. what you got to do. So That's right. Yeah. Uh, Leo, <laughs> tell me what, what what you went through. And, and even now, as you're, you're producing, uh, stop if you still are i know that yes i am talk about singing and we'll get to that in a moment but yeah um, the process because i know we had, we've asked dallas home bruce carroll a few other ccm greats the process yeah. they go through with with inspiration from god sometimes it's a total download and you're almost like in a vision other times it's like a participation uh can you share with us your feelings about that whole creative process of writing Mine always has come from scripture reading Every time I read something, it paraphrases in my head. I have a living Bible or a message Bible living right inside. <laughs> and so when I read this King James, it just translates right on over and songs come out. And yeah. then with the, the, the one song, Hide thee in Zion. I love that one. Oh, foundation has stone. That one, that was one I just wrote so that the Bible study group could learn a scripture. I said, that's all we're going to do. We're going to learn this scripture. And this, every week, we're just going to sing this. Praise so the producer, I was giving him all the songs and everything. Skip Conti was my producer. He was with Three Dog Night and, and a good producer. My goodness, yeah. gracious. His ears were just so good. Yeah. So anyway, he said, well, you got anything that's a little bit more simpler than some of the ones that you've played? And Star of the Morning was one of the ones I, I showed yeah. him too. And then I sang him the, the I Lay in Zion song. He said, now that's a hit. <laughs> I said, it's just a little Bible study. Thing that we do when they come in, we sing. He yeah, said, that's the one. Uh, yeah, and we want to go to your Bible study. <laughs> that lit up the charts, man. I was so shocked. But that's how producers, they hear things that, yes. you know, yeah. musicians, we think, oh, that's just this. Yeah. And, and then, But they can see it in a whole nother spectrum. Yeah. So my writing comes from scriptures, Ralph. That's where uh, a lot of 
the lyrics come from and then the yeah. melodies i don't how, know how they know to attach themselves to those words but yeah. it's almost like a supernatural thing where they just the melody just grabs onto the words wow. and they just become an entity and i don't have any it's not like i've come up with this great formula and this <laughs> is cool. it's just it's all god dropping yeah. it like yeah, that you know so i have to give him all the credit amen yeah. it's kind of like a synergy right a book it really is yeah. yeah wow yeah yeah if i have no rhyme or reason i couldn't even teach a class because it's it would be hard to explain yeah, you know exactly. but there's definitely i know there's a horizontal thing that goes with that because i had to take um you know like piano lessons and all that kind of stuff i know it's a horizontal you got to learn and that but there's another vertical side that yeah. just you can't explain it yeah and that just gets dropped into your heart and yeah. and god wants certain things out and so uh he just finds a vessel that's willing to to obey, you know, and right. to yield to it. So yeah. you had a time period where you were going across the country doing some seminars with some pretty notable people. How did yeah. that start? Rudy Giuliani, Laura Bush, mm -hmm. yes. Ziegler, and Carl Powell. Yeah, yeah. What was that all? How did that start? I know, How man. I know I was I, when I was asked, I was already asking questions because there was a guy named Peter Lowe, and he's you know, he's always done well with finance and that sort of thing and all corporate life he's just been fantastic uh, above in the lord and i was out with bob larson mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we was we was kicking demons out of everybody man we just, <laughs> <laughs> i mean I didn't, at first it was kind of scary for me because i didn't know because he had so many people that would act so funny in our you know it just would it's not a normal setting yeah. and uh but anyway uh Peter Lowe came because he's Bob's friend and he came to one of the concerts, one of the, you know, conferences we did. And he said, Leon, I've always loved the music. He said, now look, I do these conferences, these big ones. He said, I'd love for you to come and just, you know, be a part of one and just, you know, mm -hmm. sing, sing a couple of songs at the conference. Yeah. And I said, what kind of conference? He said, well, there's businessmen and business women. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I said, well, what are we going to do? He said, well, I, the first one's going to be maybe a, about six weeks from now. And I said, we're going to hold, he said, the forum. I said, the forum in LA, that's 20,000 seaters. Will you just cut the whole thing off to about 600 people? Are you going to do it? He said, no, we'll have 20,000 people. Wow. I said, this is amazing. Yeah. So I had to start thinking, what the heck am I going to sing? All I got is gospel stuff. I ain't got nothing that's like a salesman crossover. Right, kind of right, right. Salesman <laughs> crossover. Go, go, go. Get up. Let's run. Let's get that money. I, I don't know. So, anyway. <laughs> So what I did, I switched up one of the Santana songs, um, Black Magic Woman, uh -huh. and I changed it to Born Again Woman. Oh, wow. Same music, yeah. everything. So to the audience, it sounded like I was getting ready to say, I got a black man. But I said, I got a born again woman. So yeah. what I explained to the audience first is that I was married to a, 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 a I count, called a little Catholic girl because that's what she was before she got saved. Uh -huh. And so I said, I got this little Catholic girl at home and I had, she told me I got to change the words. So I can't be singing Black Magic Woman. So it will always make everybody crack up. So I said, so you all forgive me, but I had to change the words of Black Magic Woman. And so I, said, so I, and I, and I said, did the music. They all knew the music sounded the oh, same. And so I, they were able to digest that. And then I would get, uh, I'd get everybody uh, singing, I believe I can fly. Cause I thought, mm -hmm. you know, for a same person, yep. they, if they sing that, that'll make them feel. So I'd have the guys stand up and they'd say, I believe I can fly. And then uh, I'd have them sit down and have the ladies stand up. I believe I can trust the sky. Mm -hmm. so, and then I'd have both groups stand up and then we, I'd have them do their arms like this. You know, so it looked like we could fly. So the whole 20,000 people oh standing goodness. up and like, we can do this, you know. So and then I would pick songs like that. And, and Peter just loved it, man. He said, this is going to work. I stayed with him from 99 to 2012. Wow. <laughs> I was out every week with him, two or three of these across the country. I never would hit that many people in the until the concert, especially yeah. non-save people. Yeah. Right. And right. then Peter would give an altar call around 11 o'clock. So, so yeah, and he and he yeah. did it kind of slick. He'd have a something they'd have to fill out. They say if you uh, want to have your life be better with God or something, it's really yeah. slick or make an affirmation. I think that's what he would say. Yeah, if you want to make an affirmation of faith, just mark that X right there, tear yeah. it off, and then put it in the wow. basket. And that then we'd have a follow up. I mean, yes. we have people in that city who would follow up. Wow. So it really was a cool gig, man. Yeah, wow. A little bit off center from a contemporary Christian thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, but still, out of the box. Very visionary. Yeah. Up out of the box. Yes. Uh, I, I want to continue with chronology, but uh, something I didn't pick up on, I want to ask you about. You okay. did some witnessing to Santa. Can you share that? Do you feel comfortable sharing that? Well, I can tell you this much. Um, when I joined the group, he was Buddhist. Yes. Okay. And so okay. he and I were what I would call uh, the ones that could talk spiritual talk the most. Mm -hmm. I, he, I think he enjoyed talking to me. Because yep. it was always something spiritual that we had to say. And I'd listen to his side as well. You know, it's just a part of making a bridge, you know, with him. Yep. So I um, need to turn this off. And so I think that through that time of conversation, um, I just kept advancing it a little bit, advancing it a little bit. Yeah. I think one day I was over at his house. We were playing tennis because we didn't live very far. I was in Santa Cruz. He was in Aptos, California. Mm -hmm. So I'd come over to his house and we'd play tennis. So and when we finished one day and I really felt strong that something special was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so we were having tea and talking and he said, he said, how did this thing happen with you with your spiritual life? And I said, and then I told him how I got saved. Mm -hmm. wow. and I told him I got baptized yeah, and everything. And he said, I want to do that. Serious. I said, really? He said, I want to do the same thing. I said, no, that is cool. So I had a friend in Santa Cruz, uh, Bob Padgett, Pastor Bob Padgett. Mm -hmm. He had the Assembly of God Church there. So I called Bob. I said, man, call us no, to make a confession of faith. <laughs> I said, can you hook him up for Sunday? He said, yeah, I'll move everything to do that. So anyway, that Sunday, we uh, he went to the, the church and, you know, he made a confession. You know, Bob, asked, you know, just like all the pastors do before you get baptized. They ask you, yeah. are you receiving Jesus as your personal right. savior? Yes. You know, are you... You know, denouncing all your sins, yes, all that. And he said, Now, you know, when you're laying down this old life and you're coming up new, mm -hmm. you understand that, Carlos. Yes. Wow. And so he I saw him get baptized and come up. Man, I couldn't, it was, wow. it was just uh the tears were just I, I'm, I'm about to. <laughs> I, I mean it was yeah. just because all of this time and I've been praying for him and praying for the whole group of men there, you know. And so to see him do that was just um just remarkable. So I said, I like Thank you, Lord. Definitely be a highlight. So yeah. after yeah. Your, your conferences, you, yes. uh, you did you start the same thing? The same thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. I we left that actually. Um, mom and dad always had foster kids in the home, okay. so uh, it it kind of got me stirred that way. So I said, when I leave the Santana group, I said I'm gonna do something to kind of help out with you know, foster kids. Mm -hmm. So back in the 80s is when I started working with a group out of Sacramento called Cornelia Foster Homes. Right. Uh, yeah. A lady named Miriam Golden. And uh, mm -hmm. so anyway, she just loved kids. She raised mm -hmm. woo, 44 of her own and about 38 foster kids, something wow. like that. So she mm -hmm. had them in and out of so one of the uh, one of the assembly persons in, in uh, Sacramento said, why don't you just start an organization? <laughs> And so she did. She started calling in. She grabbed me and she said, well, can you help? You know, so we started going to churches. And so I would have calling in right beside my album table. So when they came back to, for the albums, then a lot of times I would tell them, you know, if you've got to empty your house, a room in your house, you can take in the kid. Wow. And so that started happening. Then when we got, then she retired. And so that's when me and Renee moved here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, man, we got to do something with kids. I don't know what. Yeah. So it's like the Lord thrust me out and said, well, just, uh, this is Vegas. They, you find all kind of uh, <laughs> needy situations here. Yeah. So I just, so I put the word out that I'm going to do contests. And uh, so we started having contests and kids would show up and sing for me and dance and whatever like that. And whoever won those contests, they could come with me and do some concerts in churches. Yeah. So it's just, it was a real neat kind of fish hook. Yeah. You know, to do it to kids. So we've been doing that. That we've been doing that all along. So uh -huh. uh, that that's where that started. The Sing Foundation started, uh -huh. and wow. so we still we're not doing it as heavy now, but we still right. are kind of you know part time doing it. Right. Yeah. Sowing into the next generation. Like Sowing into next generation. That's, that's what awesome. Sing stands for. Yeah. Yeah. And now. <laughs> Uh, you watch Ready to Rise Children's Network. Is, was that the next thing you have to say? That's the same thing, except for I was hoping to take them on the road with me. And mm -hmm. we just had so, there's too many technical things that had to go into that yeah. uh, for it to be right. I'd have to be certified something, you know, foster something or the other or some organization I'd have to be. And I really didn't have time to really go through all the jump all through all those hoops. So mm -hmm. I just figured I would just love on 
kids in towns that we go to instead of uh -huh. taking these kids from Vegas with me. Yeah. I just yeah. jumped into a town and then grabbed the locals there. And uh -huh. so that, that became a deal. So Red and Rise kind of uh, took a ride to other cities to see if I could get other kids to be a part of, uh, you know, if they, I would do a contest. I would ask the pastor, you know, mm -hmm. who's the best singer in you, you know, from age 12 to 16. Mm -hmm. And so they said, oh, well, this one and that one. So yeah. I'd have them come up and perform and uh -huh. have them sing behind me on some songs. So wow. I send that music ahead of time. You know, wow. like that. So Ready to Rise just became, a, it just became national. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Now your new project, you have a, a new uh, CD out. With yes, Paul sir. Paul. Talk to me about that. That's exciting. Where this is it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. no, you can see it. Yeah, That's I know cool. you can see it. But so anyway. like a Zoom project that kind of Yes, well, actually, um, we, we, um, it's, we had songs that I hadn't recorded well, I had a few that I had recorded, like Start the Morning. Uh, uh -huh. I had a few songs that I had recorded, but I hadn't put them on CD yet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like The Prayer, you know, that Celine Dion and, and uh, Andre Pacelli do. Yeah. Uh, and Christ Alone, uh, yeah. I Can Only Imagine. Yeah. I hadn't, I would sing them in concert, yeah. but I never put them on a CD. Right. So, Renee said, this would be a good time while we're in this COVID, we're sh shut down. Yep. Why don't you take those songs and record them now? Great. So I said, okay. So I, I asked people if they would want to uh, be a part of the project. Mm -hmm. And I said, All you, what I'd like to have you do is come with me from place to place. And I said, the only way I could think of that is put you on the album cover. Yeah. So I said, you know, just for, you know, a little donation like that, you know, I'll put your face on the cover and put your name inside the CD. And so it'd be like you're traveling with me everywhere I go. Nice. So a lot of people who love that idea. Yeah, and so yeah. they that's what started happening. So all these people have sent in uh you know their pictures and they're mm. they wanted to be a part of it. And Renee came up with the idea of uh oh, oh this sing along with Leon yeah. because yeah. that's exactly what these these are all sing along type songs. Uh -huh. right. uh, pulling down strongholds, uh uh What's the other one? Oh, happy day, everybody. Yeah, knows. great, good old him. Love that. Hard mornings on here. Yeah. And I wrote a, a kind of a new um, political song. Uh, I tried to do one for the Democratic side and the Republicans up me and down me the other side. So I did one for the Republican side. Democrats <laughs> up me and down me. So I said, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Just sing. Just yeah. sing yeah. about America. <laughs> Don't sing about trying to help some, you know, yeah. so, I, oh, so like I'm going here called United We Stand. And really? it's all about America. So, so I guess both sides can hold hands on this one. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. We need that. yeah. Yeah. So wow. I, it is, and I got the last one, the, the, the single so far as We Will Rise. Um, mm -hmm. I saw someone today as they slowly walked my way. I could tell that they were different from me. Someone said, don't like them. Then they started to fight them for no reason that I could see. God help us, mm. move us toward the healing. Yeah. Everyone is precious in your sight. Praise we God. will rise, rise above the language, rise above the colors, mm. rise above the enemy of our soul. We will yeah. rise, rise above the anger, rise above the hatred. We can take right. control. We will rise. Yeah. And so and it's got a really nice oh, melody God. line, kind of like a yeah. we are the world kind of melody line. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah, so, so how, anyway. how do we how do we purchase that? You get on your website, Leon. Yeah, Patillo. you have to go on uh, leonpatillo.org. Uh, oh, okay. uh, just hit the you know purchase button, and you see everything will pop up. You will see it oh, on there, and people can can get the CD. That's awesome. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. or that's they can right. download. Now, yeah. uh, now with COVID easing up, are you uh, yeah. traveling a bit more with concerts or church to church? Or? Yes, uh -huh. uh, like I said, this week we're going to do a little four day thing, uh, and so. Uh, it's kind of easing, but what's been happening here in town is really funny because a lot of the praise and worship leaders from various denominations have been leaving and going to pursue something else or maybe uh, praise and worship in some other state. Right. And yeah. so I've been getting called. Similarly, God called me and said, hey, man, we, we need, you know, then, then the Lutheran church called the Presbyterian. Hey, come on. We need my music guy. He left. So no, I have no. to kind of adapt myself to whatever yeah. the domination it is. Yeah. And, but, I'll, you wow. know, I'll find out what their, their group yeah. is. And that if it's more of an Amazing Grace kind of vibe, right. I'll just stay right there. If yeah. it's something that's got a little bit more flair, you yeah. know, a little swagger, yeah. like Sunday, you know, I can swagger there a little bit. Yeah. So I'll go there with them. And so it's in a Baptist church in town called and, and said, man, we need you. So I did three services for them last uh, about three weeks ago. 
And uh, but you know, he had eight o'clock, nine thirty, and eleven. So the eight o'clock is real. You got to do Amazing Grace. You got to do uh, At the Cross. At the Cross. You know, what a friend we have. Right. You got to go there. Yeah. But then you you get into uh, you get into the nine thirty service. You can do Glorious Day. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so uh, yeah, come out of that tomb. You know. And so anyway, it's just wonderful. So um, anyway, I just got, like I said, I've been getting a lot of calls that that mm -hmm. way right now. Uh, but this will be our first kind of trip out. We'll yes. be going to Milton Free Water, uh, Washington. I mean, yeah. Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're well, landing in Spokane and we have to drive to Oregon. Yeah. So I have to tell you, I was raised in the Methodist Church. I was raised with Amazing Grace and all really? that stuff. Right. Yeah. So I, when I was in high school, I started, you know, I went to an Assembly of God youth group and all of a sudden they're yeah. like your music and other music. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I didn't even know it existed, right? Uh -huh. I was like, Woo! Transformation, you know. Yeah, that's good. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah so that's we right. at nine thirty or eleven. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I had a. My mom was actually. This is gonna really crack you up. My mom was Baptist. My daddy was Methodist. And when they didn't feel like going to church, they would send me down to the local Catholic church. Oh, so boy. I really had an overview yes. of three yeah. different denominations yeah. while I'm growing up. Wow. So now I leave Santana. I'm right back doing what I was yeah. doing. Yeah. Full circle. Full yeah. Circle. Full circle. I think the Lord just gave me that Santana, maybe some of that, uh, like we was talking about the business meetings things, yes. just to give me a chance to do something now to really touch a secular mm -hmm. situation that yes. maybe as someone else wouldn't have the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he let me do that. And so I'm fulfilled mm -hmm. totally on the, on the professional out there doing it on the big stage side. I, yeah. That's totally, I, I'm totally fulfilled with that. Now I can get back to, you know, doing what I was doing before. <laughs> so yeah. just kind of taking some of this into, you know, when you get a chance to do a Presbyterian church, man, that I'm telling you, there's a whole nother awakening that happens for the people that are there. Oh, and yeah. even though I kind of creep in with amazing grace like that before I'm through, Dance children dances in the mix, <laughs> <laughs> and they, and they, they don't realize it. They, they say, well, he is doing so I have some friends, not very about an hour and a half from here. They came to our album listening party. Uh, Presbyterian pastor and his wife does the music, and she said, "I grew up on your music." She said, "I have kind of transformed some of the Presbyterians here toward that sort of vibe." A little bit, and it just—it's not enough getting on one denomination. The other. It's just that oh, yeah. I, I would be nice if all of them could. If everybody could go to if a Baptist could go over to a Methodist church. Methodist could yeah, go to a Catholic. Girl. Get a Catholic pastor to go over to a you know same mm -hmm. God. I mean, you could see a whole other side of Jesus that mm -hmm. you didn't even know existed. That's right. You know, so uh, I think all of it's relevant. You know, so yeah. it's just yeah. So it's just neat to see mm -hmm. you know, how God is kind of. He's stirring this cake in yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good stir. Yeah. 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 Do, you think, do you think there's hope for America for another great awakening and revival? You know, it, it again, the way it's got to, according to the scripture, right. if my people Amen. who are called by my name, right? Right, start will with humble themselves yeah. <laughs> and pray. Because we always think. We hear that they got to, so somehow that finger gets pointing that yeah. they got to change. Yeah. <laughs> they, and that scripture has specific, we, uh, the revival will happen once we yeah. come to some real place like yeah. that. Yeah. And, and I don't know what that's going to take. I mean, right. this COVID has really, for me, stirred me in some areas that I didn't think uh, mm -hmm. were relevant before, but now I see how relevant they are in, mm -hmm. in the future of my life. Yeah. I've had more time with my grandkids. I've had, yeah. I got more time with my kids. Yeah. Um, there's a closeness that has happened from yeah. that. Um, mm -hmm. I can't say a whole bunch of more scripture reading, but more scripture reading than I was before. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm a little bit closer and I'm praying a little bit deeper than I was. So um, I think when we get shook up like this, I mm -hmm. think that God has a way of, mm -hmm. of doing that to us so we can become... Mm -hmm. I've been hearing that from a lot of I've been hearing that from a lot of people. Yes. And yeah. I follow, you know, I'm just a just a me, but on Instagram, I've I've been following a lot of uh Christian music okay. singers and their whole process, what they've been doing during COVID. And it's yes. a lot of deep search and a lot of right. deep songwriting. I'm telling you. Yes. That's yeah. dealing with our hearts. I really believe he is. That's yeah, it, it really yeah. is. And I think it's gonna be the awakening you'll know it because it won't have the same taste 
yeah. that we've been having before. You'll yeah. see less walls between yeah. denominations. You'll see mm -hmm. less, uh, you, the cultural thing will kind of fold in on itself. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, all the scientists are saying the same thing, yeah. you know, that the time folds in. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what you're yeah. talking about, but you know, the beginning and the end, yeah. then, then, then you can make the beginning like the end. <laughs> so yeah. they, they, they got all these philosophies. Yeah. But you know, I just think, and once we fold in on each other and, right. and see that what God right. is trying right. to start with us in the beginning, yeah. if we become that, buddy, it's going to be unstoppable. It's going, it's going to be, it's going to move. If we really can get up on top of a mountain and yeah. shine that light on top, yeah. The whole yeah. world's gonna know what, what, what the darkness really looks like. They're gonna say it's not that. <laughs> That's yeah, sure. right. Yeah. So, yeah. And promoting yeah. each other's things instead of worrying about our own backyard fences. I'm thinking yes. of the Awaken yes. the Dawn movement. I'm yes. thinking what uh, Kurt Cameron just finished up 100 days of, of camp, campfire revival. And then oh, good. Backyard, uh, 15 minutes with uh, uh, Dutch Sheets. We, we watch okay. that. There's yes. some things God's doing, and, and I know you ran on this, brother. It's yeah. been so cool to be able to talk to you. I wanted to, I too. wanted to praise God. I I learned we, we were just doing some background studying up before we came on board. That uh, you you and Ray had a close call with your in an RV. In an RV. Wow. What happened? And that, that was really scary. Yeah. We had just bought this thing on Friday. I went and picked up my band. We were here in LA, went and picked up the band in uh, Long Beach area. We took a two or three day thing, a uh, couple gigs we did, and then I dropped them back off. Well, and then like we were coming ago. back, huh? Was no, this like, is at 05. 05, that's how, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is an 05. And so, but it, be, it became a big deal uh, mm -hmm. before things went viral, but I mean, it was a big deal in that, in that day. And uh, we were coming back home and the, uh, all of a sudden, something happened with the air conditioning, and I saw a little spark go right across the top, top of the ceiling. And then uh, the next thing I knew, smoke in the, in the rig. And I don't know what happened. I had my window down about like this over here, electrical thing. And, and Renee says, smoke, smoke. And I said, wow. So I had to find some place to pull over. And so I pulled over, and I couldn't even see her. She's over back by the kitchen area. And she was just kicking the door at yelling Jesus name and kicking uh -huh. and then the door finally opened and I squeezed out through the window because all the electrical stuff was gone mm -hmm. so when we both ran around to the front of the rig and it was just like in a movie we were kind of running it was almost looked like slow motion you know slow -mo. <laughs> you felt and, like it, it too, and the whole thing yeah, the whole thing just blew up behind us like Goodness. wow so I was like Lord and this is believe it or not it was on October 31st <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You to take us out, man. Snuff you out. Man. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, we got, we got a little, little blessing on that one, man. So, yeah. And yeah, like, like Peter, when Jesus said that the same desire to sift you as wheat, he was yeah. desiring to, to stuff you out. But yeah. God has hand on you. He's plan. giving you that many more years. And uh, I know. We, see, you know, I could have been yeah. gone in 05. Easy. Yeah, oh, easy. Yeah. Both yeah. Uh, wow. Here we are. So he's got a plan. Amen. Yeah. Leon, what can we do to pray for you uh, and keep you on our hearts? Anything specific with uh, the four-day outreach coming up? We'll pray for that. Yeah, um, yeah, we're doing that. And, you know, I really, I want this CD, um, Sing Along with Leon. I really want this to hit at least a million homes this year. Okay. I think we can do it by December. And what I've been telling all my fans is just send a little donation here and there like that. I'll, if I get enough money up, I can get those CDs really low in price and we can give them away. Yeah, right. I wish yeah. we could just give out a million CDs because all the songs here, mm. they really, if you give it to a secular person, I got a, a neighbor right next door. We just moved to a spot. And um, this neighbor just really came over the other day just because she said, my husband needs to have somebody talk to him. <laughs> I said, <"Okay." laughs> <laughs> you know <her. laughs> okay she don't know nothing about me or who i am or nothing but uh i mean she doesn't know i was with santana because i did pull yeah. into this neighborhood two or three people was asking me stuff and yeah. so they, they knew that much but i didn't know why she wanted me to go talk to him so i went there to talk to him and um come it's actually the conversation flipped over to her having some stuff because she had some miscarriages two or three miscarriages mm -hmm. and yeah. she really 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 wants babies and mm -hmm. she didn't know what happened to those kids 
Mm. And I had heard from some prophets that, you know, they had, two or three of them had gone to heaven. They hadn't even, the prophets had never talked to each other. And each one says they had seen some fetuses in heaven. And so I didn't know what to tell them. I heard this from them. And so I don't see that in the Bible. I mean, there's some weird preachers and, <laughs> and yeah, revelations. Right. So, so yeah. there could be fetuses there. Yeah. But anyway, so I told her, I, I really think that your babies are being yeah. held there. And so uh, yeah. so she just bust out crying, man. She held me and just cried probably for five minutes. She said, that so helps me because I didn't know what happened with my kids. Yeah. And so and so my job now is to get her to heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I think right. she's going to want to go now she because she maybe she'll see the babies later yeah. or something. Yeah. And I don't know. And I, I'm saying this out loud, Ralph. Yeah. But I don't, you know, it, it's true or not. I'm just saying that for that moment, it really gave us some comfort. So yeah. I, I think this album is going to be uh, like a vaccination. <laughs> okay. I, I think yeah. it's going to be, I, if I can vaccinate a million people this year with this vaccine. Wow. I think we're going to have somebody, the disease of hardness of the heart and mm, yeah. insensitivity. I think some of that's going to get lessened that's when right. they listen to it. Because the songs on here, a couple of them, the, the prayer is definitely, yeah. everybody secular has heard that one. Right. And I can only imagine that's yeah. that went that's both ways. Everybody. Yeah, so I, it's a comfortable album to listen to. And I think right. people uh, will, will, I think the touch yeah. of God will come off of this and give them what they need. So that's my big prayer. That's good. We, well, we'll give away a million CDs this year. Million CDs. Well, I want to pray for you right now. Thank I you. I want to thank you for the honor of, of allowing us to do this Zoom interview. I know that <laughs> <I'm laughs> really we've been so excited. Oh, good, I know it's good. the first time it didn't work out of uh, what happened, but um and we'll keep keep on keep in touch. Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna text your wife a scripture that I think will help you with your neighbor that will really even more confirm being a pastor. My mind went right to a scripture, but I don't want to take the time now good. with that lady. Okay. You might encourage her enough, but I think thank it's gonna you. really help even more. So yeah. good. Let's thank pray. You. Amen. All right. Thank, thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for thank our you, good Lord. brother in Jesus, Leon Patillo. Oh, yes. It is so freaky to think about myself in 1982. Um, uh, playing his album Star of the Morning, and here I am, what 30 years <laughs> later almost, and I'm talking to him on a TV screen. Uh, <laughs> He's got the anointing of the Lord. Lord, you, you have blessed him and you saved him and Renee from that terrible fire. I know <laughs> we can kind of laugh about what you said to Peter, but yeah. I think the same kind of thing really was happening because you said, Jesus, that the enemy's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. But you said, my purpose is that you might have life and what have it more abundantly. So we Amen. pray and prophesy that over our brother Leon and Renee Amen. and the ministry tonight. We pray that an extra special touch of the yes. Holy Spirit and double portion of spirit will be upon him. And Amen. Lord, this the CD project. Wow. Vaccination of the Spirit of God through a CD. I love that. Yes. Idea. Yes. So bless him. Give him health Thank and strength you. with his kids and his grandkids and safety and uh, let him just rest in you. He's got with yeah. a lot of energy, Lord. You've given him that. Pray that he would lean on your energy and do Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and Amen. lean on, on your own understanding, but in all your ways and all the time. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you, brother. That's awesome, man. We'll do it all again. Right. All okay. right. We'll, we'll hook up maybe down the road a little bit, kind yeah. of give you a, uh, an update I on how, how that. the album is going. Like that. Okay. Okay, okay guys. Okay. God bless you. We'll see you soon.